This is the base model M2 MacBook Air. Just before I find out if doubling the RAM to 16 gigabytes is better than doubling only the SSD to 512 gigabytes for software developers. Is it the memory or the SSD that makes the real difference? I'm going to gradually add more and more load equally to all these machines using many of the dev tools you're familiar with and see how it affects RAM, machine usability, and running compilations. After a reboot, RAM usage was almost identical across the board, hovering around four and a half gigabytes. When it came to the SSD, the base model's 256 gigabyte drive filled up quite fast, especially with virtual machines like Windows 11 eating up a chunky 46 gigabytes. Meanwhile, the 512 gigabyte model had a breezy 300 gigabyte to spare. In either one of these cases, if you have tons of large files like I do, then an external drive might be the way to go for you. This is a Samsung 980, which have really dropped in price recently in a custom Thunderbolt 4 enclosure. I have a video on this one. I'll link to that down below too. I opened up Chrome and oh boy, it's true what they say about Chrome gobbling up RAM. I'm going to stack overflow.com because you know they need the traffic. A single tab took the base model to five gigabytes, but Hold on a second, that's not exactly true. I'll elaborate in a second. Here we also see the 16 gigabyte model go to 5.63 gigabytes and the 512 gigabyte SSD model close to five gigabytes. So they're all about the same. I've just opened up 15 tabs on each one of these, email, Google Drive, Apple website to buy more Apple gear, GitHub, a few tabs of GitHub and some YouTube. We all have more than 15 tabs open, come on. 30 to 40 at least. But with 15, the RAM was getting a workout. The memory pressure is building up a little bit. We've got six out of eight gigabytes used on both of the eight gigabyte machines and 8.63 gigabytes used on the 16 gigabyte machine. No swap. Now, a fun fact I discovered is that macOS loves utilizing RAM to the fullest. The more RAM available, the more macOS tends to use preloading stuff in the background. Since 2013, Apple had this memory management scheme Scheme going on with Mac OS and the theory behind it is that unused memory is wasted memory so you should have as much stuff as possible in RAM and what's making up most of this is cache so a lot of the stuff is being cached in the background by the operating system because it thinks well you're gonna use that soon aren't you you're gonna use it soon I know you are I'm gonna have it ready for you just to give you an idea, this is my MacBook Pro, my daily driver. I don't know if you can see that. No, you can't see that. <laughs> and out of the 64 gigabyte physical memory, 35.84 is being used. All I have open is Chrome, Visual Studio Code, Photoshop uses it a lot, and iOS Simulator. <laughs> I don't even have that much, but it stores 15 gigabytes in cache. While doing these tests, I will periodically do an Xcode build in the background to see how the results are affected. Wow, the build times for this are so close. I don't know why I'm excited. I, I should have expected this right this is what i said was gonna happen 126.56 126.57 and 126.94 diving deeper i launched vs code alongside xcode and the ram barely budged we're gonna need to work a little harder to get that memory going up I think I know just the thing. I'm gonna open up Docker. Now the memory pressure is clearly going up here and it's actually getting into the orange on the base model. We're not using swap yet, but it's orange. It's telling us, this is just a warning. You better watch out. You're getting kind of close. Orange. What the heck does that mean? Well, I'm making a separate video on RAM and how to use RAM, so make sure you subscribe to check that out. No problem with memory pressure on the 16 gigabyte machine, but we're getting close on the other eight gigabyte machine, although we're not in the orange yet. Notice we are getting some compression going on in the memory here, same thing over here, but on the 16 gigabyte machine, the compression is very low. So memory management is actually pretty nice on these machines. Benchmarking with Docker running, the eight gigabyte models clocked around 119 seconds, while the 16 gigabyte model was a tad faster at 116 seconds, so we're already starting to see the difference. Next, I ran Azitop, which runs power metrics under the hood. We're not using any of its functions, but it is kind of a memory hog, so I'm gonna have it running to uh, do just that. And on top of that, I ran the Primes project by Dave Plummer from Dave's Garage. Running these together was a game changer. The base model and the 512 gigabyte model started relying on swap space, signaling pretty high memory pressure. But we're not using any swap on the 16 gigabyte model yet. At this point, the Xcode build really showed some differences between the models, with the 16 gigabyte model taking a lead at 135 seconds, the base model 146.9 seconds, and the 512 gigabyte SSD model in the middle at 145 seconds. Next, I fired up Parallels with Windows 11 
and the 8 gigabyte models were deep in their swap reserves at this point. Finally, we're seeing higher memory pressure on the 16 gigabyte machine now. It doesn't have any swap yet, but we're getting very close. Now, if you've been watching this channel for at least a couple of videos, you might be familiar with the Mandelbrot test. This one got things really toasty. It simulates really heavy processor usage. I'm not seeing any degradation in performance as far as usability. So I'm still feeling like I can use the system. I'm gonna create a new Xcode project here. The system is just as snappy as it was initially, which with Xcode is not super snappy, but it works the same. I'm gonna create an iOS app and I'm gonna run this app on an iPad simulator. Wow, we've got 3.35 gigabytes of swap used on the 16 gigabyte model now. Ho ho, this one is really starting to struggle. I don't think this app started up in the simulator. After doing that, the 16 gigabyte model finished our Xcode build at 284 seconds. Significant difference from my previous runs, but it's a lot faster than the two 8 gigabyte models. The base model finishing at 342 seconds and the 512 gigabyte model lagged behind at 352 seconds. But here we're talking about a lot of processor contention, so the slower times are understandable. However, you can still see the relative difference between the machine with higher RAM and the machines with lower RAM. I'm gonna throw a wrench into this and start up a Docker example voting app. You've seen me do this test before. There's a bunch of Docker containers that all work together. There's a Python container, there's a Node container, there's a dot networker, Redis cache, and a Postgres database also, all running together and talking to each other on top of the Docker thing that we already have going on in the background. So yeah. I ran the Xcode build one more time. And as to be expected, this 16 gigabyte machine is the winner at 146 seconds. But then the 512 gigabyte model that's using the most amount of swap, it's got seven gigabytes of memory used and 9.3 gigabytes of swap used. That's a lot. But remember this swap is actually running off of the faster SSD. And that may be helping it out a little bit here because we got 152 as the result. Perhaps the faster SSD is contributing here to the fast faster build time, slightly faster build time, not huge difference, but slightly faster. But that wasn't enough. With all that running, I launched a pretty decently sized project in VS Code. It's a mobile app that my team and I are building, so it's a real project. Then I launched the Freeform app and a spreadsheet. Now here, the 512 gigabyte SSD model's memory pressure hit red. I'm starting to notice a little bit of a lag on the base model. Oh yeah. Ooh. That takes a while. The 16 gigabyte model still switches pretty easily between windows. That's pretty good. And this 512 gigabyte model is also switching pretty easily between windows. So the base model is struggling the most here. Okay, I've closed the lids. I let the laptops cool down. I recharged them. They slept for a bit. And now it's time to pop them open. With all the stuff still in memory, I don't know, where do, where do things go when a laptop is sleeping? If a tree falls in the forest and nobody hears it, does it make a sound? After giving the Macs a short rest, they woke up lightning fast. Wow, okay, check this out. This one's got 11.36 gigabytes of swap being used. 6.4. 7.68 and I'm gonna run this build. One of the reasons I wanted to restart the machine is to completely eliminate any kind of thermal events that might be happening. So we get a nice fresh build without thermal interfering with it, yet all the memory is still being used. Build run times were down, but still you can see the differences there where memory seems to really play a big difference. Now that we're here, I wanna see how quickly programs start up. I'm gonna quit Xcode and I wanna start it up to see how long it's gonna take. We'll go with the 512 model first and let's go. Four seconds, 16 gigabyte model, two and a half seconds. And finally, the base model, that was 3.79 seconds. <laughs> What's curious here is that it looks like for some reason, the base model is actually behaving a little bit faster than the upgraded SSD model. I'm not satisfied yet. I thought I could outsmart macOS with a cheeky Zig memory challenge. I want all these orange things, the pressure of the memory to hit red. I can't get it to get to red even with all this stuff running. Here's my plan. There's a little language called Zig and you can allocate memory with it. I'm gonna cheat. I don't care. Write your angry comments down below. I'm gonna execute this program. I'm gonna allocate eight gigabytes of memory on each one of these machines and hold it right there for five minutes before releasing it. Let's go. 
Mac OS, however, had other plans. It says it allocated the RAM, but we're not in the red for memory pressure. What's going on here? There's main in activity monitor. There it is, moving up the stack. Eight gigabytes. Real memory, 432 kilobytes? Ooh. Oh, it's compressing it. <laughs> Oh, this thing is just not gonna let us do it. Wow, Mac OS, it's tricky. It's seeing that we're actually filling the memory with a bunch of nonsense, and it has the opportunity to compress that memory. So we see the compressed memory go up, but the memory pressure is not going up. I failed. Well played, Mac OS. So for the face-off between the three MacBook Air models, here's what I found. On the processor side, all models are on par, thanks to the identical processors obviously. For memory management, the 16 gigabyte model really shines, handling tasks faster with less strain than its 8 gigabyte counterparts. It has lower memory compression and it relies less on SSD swap space, further highlighting its efficiency. As far as storage speed, the 512 gigabyte SSD model nudges ahead in a few areas like quicker wake up times, but for most tasks, the SSD size wasn't a game changer. And as for usability, all models held their ground, surprisingly with all that stuff running on them. But the 16 gigabyte RAM model stood out as the most resilient, while the base model showed some lag when pushed. So for developers, the 16 gigabyte RAM MacBook Air is the star pick. It offers smoother multitasking and better performance under pressure, while the 512 gigabyte SSD model has its merits, especially for those handling large data sets. But if you had to choose one upgrade, RAM takes the crown for typical developer tasks. Now I did explore SSD differences a little bit more and you can check that out in this video right over here. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.